Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today as we continue a life-changing series of studies on the teachings of Jesus. And our topic today, how to be saved. Well, there couldn't be a more important topic than that. And so I'm glad that you joined us. And it's good to be together again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What a great series on the teachings of Jesus. And if you've missed any in that series, I want to invite you to go to our website at hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch the past programs in this series on the teachings of Jesus. You can even download our theme song, the sheet music, even the outlines that we use. I know many of you use those in your own Bible study group, so lots of resources there at the website. We're also delighted when you write to us from around the world. We know of at least 130 countries where Hope Sabbath School members are joining us for Bible study. We'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. And you know, people say, I like to hear these emails from around the world because it, it encourages me that God's doing something amazing. This is from Dennis in Zimbabwe. Anyone here from Zimbabwe? Not, not today, all right? Dennis, young Zimbabwean, most Friday evenings, my friends and I, who are students at the National University of Science and Technology, sit in my room and watch a downloaded copy of Hope Sabbath School. Is that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to ask Dennis how many there are that come to his room. It's such a blessing, especially the insights we get, some of the stories we knew, but we would normally miss out on some exciting detail that would make us think more about God's work in our lives. So thank you. May God continue to bless you. And he says, our Savior's return is at hand. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Dennis, thanks for writing to us. We're looking forward to the glorious return of Jesus too. And we're glad that your dorm room there at the university is a place where God is welcome and Hope Sabbath School can be studied. Here's a note from... Francisco, who's an Angolan living in Thailand. Wow. Yes, in a small world, right? <laughs> Thanks for writing to us, Francisco. Hope Sabbath School has been such a blessing to my life. He says, the blessings of this program are at a spiritual level and also helping improve my English. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a double blessing, right? Win-win. <laughs> May God keep blessing through this program. The harvest truly is great. Amen. Well, thanks for writing to us, uh, Francisco, from Angola. Oh, no, from Thailand, but you're from Angola. Here's one from the United States of America. And Ro Ronald writes to us. Ronald was actually one of our team members when Hope Sabbath School first started. And he and his wife went as missionaries to Asia. And they're now back in the United States of America. And Ronald writes now with two precious little children. Thank you so much for the ministry of Hope Sabbath School. We bought a TV this year and a Roku box. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, a Roku box can enable you to access the Hope Channel and Hope Sabbath School through a wireless internet connection in your home. So they got a Roku box, R-O-K-U, okay. Roku. And uh, so now we get Hope Sabbath School and it's very nice. Well, Ronald, thanks for writing to us from Nebraska. God bless you and your family, your growing family, and thanks that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here's a note from Brist Brister in Zambia. Mm. Brister writes and says, uh, my uncle, my aunt, and I are Sabbath School discussion leaders. Mm. So we've got three teachers there. And Hope Sabbath School has always been a blessing. May God Almighty continue blessing you spiritually and physically. I say amen. Amen. Thanks so much, uh, Brista, for writing to us from Zambia. And you know, we have literally thousands of Bible teachers who download the outline from our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. I think we had 150,000 downloads last year. Mm. So if you're a teacher... Uh, check out our website. And now I have something very special. It is a real live letter. We don't get those very often. This is a real live letter from Florida in the United States of America. Teresa Louise writes and says, I just wanted to thank you to let you know how much Hope Sabbath School has helped me to renew my faith in God. Amen. Now I found at the end of the letter 
that Teresa Louise is 84 years old. Wow. Wow. But she says, and I'm continuing to read, my soul was so hungry for fellowship and the teaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I found it in Hope Sabbath Amen. School. Amen. Wow. Amazing. I began to feel like I knew all of the participants, and I look forward to studying with everyone. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank you for writing to us, Teresa. We're praying for you, and uh, we're just glad for each one of our Hope Sabbath School members, aren't we? Amen. And if you've not written to us, write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Or if you have, and God's doing something amazing in your life or through your ministry, we would love to hear from you. Right now, we're going to sing our theme song for this series on the teachings of Jesus, taken from Colossians 3.16. You can download it from our website, Sheet Music 2. Learn it, sing it in your choirs. We're going to sing it together right now. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all. I was thinking as we were singing, if you had told your family members, I'm going to sing on global television, they'd probably say, are you sure? <laughs> but we're not doing it for ourselves. Amen. We're not trying. We're not some great famous choir mm -hmm. or bringing attention to ourselves. We're wanting to bring attention to Jesus, Amen. right? Amen. And I thought about this, the great words in that song, teaching and admonishing one another. That's what we're doing in Hope Sabbath School. Amen. We're all learning together. And this topic is so important, and I'm glad you joined us as we talk about how to be saved from the teaching of Jesus. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us today. Lord God, we are so excited that we can open the Word of God and study the teachings of Jesus about how to be saved. What a vitally important topic. We are thankful for Hope Sabbath School members all around the world, but we also know that you want to teach us today. And so I pray that our hearts would be open again today, each one of us, wherever we are, that we would hear your word in a life-changing way. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as we study the teaching of Jesus about how to be saved, we'll discover four vital steps. Now, maybe someone would say, well, I'll make five or six or three. But I'm, I'm going to share four in our study today, and, and we'll see if we can remember them as we go along. And step one is to recognize our need. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, 
and verse 3. And Joel, perhaps you could start our study today, the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 and verse 3. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? Someone help me. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Nathan? I think it has to do with recognizing our condition spiritually, our yeah. condition in relation to God. It's, not, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting because I think in Luke's gospel it said, blessed are the poor. But, but poor Matthew spirit. expands on that a little. Of course, Jesus was teaching for a long time. Neither of them has everything he said. Yeah. But it's not just talking about your income level, is it? No. No. It's recognizing your spiritual poverty. poverty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that you need God. And the strange thing is that if you recognize you need Him, you'll inherit the kingdom. Now, that's not all you have to do, mm -hmm. but that is one step. Mm -hmm. Let's look in Luke chapter 5, a story that um, confirms that. Matt, in Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse 27, we're talking about recognizing our need. And Elaine, perhaps you could read that for us okay, in I'll, Luke chapter 5. I will we'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Um, Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Later, Levi held a banquet in his house with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of the Levi's follow, followed ta fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. But but the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly uh, to Jesus, Jesus' disciples, why do you eat and drink with such scum? And verse 31 and 32. Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who, who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and mm. need to repent. Mm -hmm. Now that's an interesting story. It's the story of the calling of one of the 12 disciples. What was his name? Levi, well, he had two names, actually. Matthew. Levi, Matthew. Matthew. Right. Uh, it's the calling of, of Levi, Matthew. And it actually includes several of the steps of how to be saved. Mm. But the key point we're noting in this part of the text is, in order to be saved, I need to mm. recognize that I'm sinner. sick, to use that yeah. illustration. Yeah. I need a doctor mm. or a sinner, and I need a savior, yeah. right? So the first step is to recognize our need. Now, I've got a question for us to interact. If, if my heart, as the Bible teaches, is naturally inclined towards evil, I don't need to teach a child how to want to be disobedient, right? No. No. There's, there's just something in the human heart. Uh, if that's a natural inclination, how is it possible for me to say, I need a change? Mm. How does that happen, Jonathan? Um, I was thinking of the story here. I mean, you have these Pharisees, and they were in Christ's presence and didn't see the need for it. Um, right. But it seems like it's it's people that take the time to look at Christ and see His beauty and see His character that you say you realize, oh, woe is me, and you have you, you have this poverty and like have, have mercy. So if on I'm me. just surfing the internet and watching media, which has all of the violence and promiscuity and materialism and selfishness, I might say, well, I'm no worse than anybody else on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. But you're saying, when I look at Jesus, or we might even say a devoted follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. I might say there's something different there mm -hmm. that could be a clue, right? Yeah. Joel, what do you think? I think it's the Word of God. You know, like if, if, when I'm looking at Matthew over here, it doesn't tell us what Matthew is going through before Jesus came to him. It could have been, you know, Matthew was contemplating in his mind he must have been going through something and he must have been saying I need some help and because he was longing to I guess be saved in a sense when the Word of God entered into his ears it was easy for him to make that decision so he knew something was missing yeah mm. uh, let's go to a text in John chapter 16 and verse 8 because what what I heard you saying is he was sensing a need, and mm. the Bible will suggest to us that that is also the work of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 8. Nathan, would you read that for us? Sure, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. 
Mm -hmm. Speaking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and speaking about the Holy I was going to ask the context. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the Spirit of truth, mm -hmm. and He'll convict us. He'll bring conviction of sin, which was back to the text that says those who are sinners need a Savior, or those who are sick need a, doctor. Need a doctor. Mm -hmm. So, so, friend comes to you, bless, and says, I just don't feel any need for God. Uh, what counsel would you give to that friend? I would um, counsel that friend to search in their heart and um, ask, ask the Lord to reveal something that they are not able to see themselves. You know, that is a powerful, a simple but powerful. A young lady came to me, uh, one of my students, when I was teaching at the university, and she said, I, I don't feel any need for God. And I said, why don't you pray <laughs> in the name of Jesus and ask God to show you your need? Mm -hmm. She came back. I think it was a day or so later, and she said, don't ever tell anyone to do that <laughs> without telling them to say, and Lord, hold me close to you mm -hmm. when you show me my great need. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good counsel. Amen. Person says, I don't feel any need. Well, you know what? If there's a God in heaven and this whole battle between good and evil is mm -hmm. true, you pray in Jesus' name for God to show you your need. Yeah. And something will happen. But you also pray that he'll hold you close yeah. because you could be terrified yeah. yes. when you see how intense mm -hmm. your need really is. Well, mm -hmm. step number one in the process of salvation is to do what? Recognize, Recognize. Recognize your need. Mm -hmm. but, but then you have to repent. Let's look at Matthew 4. Verse 17, I've heard the word repent many times, but you know, many people don't know what it means. Hmm. Matthew 4 and verse 17. Puya, would you read that for us? Sure. Uh, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, in order to repent, I have to understand what repentance is, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at another text, Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. Jonathan, perhaps you could read that for us. Uh, Luke 13, beginning with verse 1. All right, and I'll be re reading from the New Living Translation. About this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think... Those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee, Jesus asked. Is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too, unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they worse sinners, the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No. And I tell you again that unless you repent, you too will perish. How important is it to repent? Very, very, very important. It's the, one of the core aspects of this. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely essential, right? Absolutely. If you don't repent, Jesus said, you will perish. 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 What does the word perish mean? Die. Die. Yeah, yeah. You're lost. You're dead. It's over. That's right. Yeah. So, first, if I just recognize my need but don't do anything else, mm. I'm going to perish. I'm going to perish, right? Mm. So I'm going to recognize my need. One more text, and then I want you to help me with the definition. Mark 6 and verse 12. So Jesus starts his ministry by saying, repent. And here, as Jonathan just read, when people say, well, maybe they were worse, because he says, no, no, you need to repent, mm. or you'll perish. Uh, Abigail, do you have uh, Mark 6 and verse 12? Yes. And I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, they went out and preached that people should repent. They're going to do other things too. They're going to cast out demons, heal the sick. This is amazing, the power of Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. But the message is to repent. So now here's the question. What does it mean to repent? Mm -hmm. Who'd like to help us with that? Ulrich, what does it mean? Uh, it means turning away. Turning away from uh, your previous behavior that was uh, unlike God. So you acknowledge uh, the wrong. There's a sorrow in your heart. Not really for the, the effects of it, but you sorrow for what you actually did. So it's kind of like turn. making a U-turn. That's right. Me, turn, I'm heading towards what? what? What am I heading towards? Death. Mm -hmm. Death and? Destruction. Rebellion. Mm -hmm. uh, darkness. Mm -hmm. Whatever image you're using. And I turn towards Jesus. Light. Jesus, yes. light yes. Truth. Salvation. Right? Salvation. So, Salvation. Life. Yeah. so repentance is not just sorrow that I got caught, mm -hmm. right. right? It's a turn. It's a turn. Yes, Bliss. I, I, I believe it's a, it's, a, um, it's a willful action on the mm -hmm. part of the sinner 
to accept that he is a sinner and that he or she is the one that has caused that. Kind of accepting responsibility. Yes. And then going to Christ and saying, Christ, Jesus, yes, it was me. I did do this, yeah. but please forgive me. And that's coming mm -hmm. to step three, but yeah. you're right. So it's a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. Now, what's amazing, someone might say, well, I'm weak. I'm weak. I can't make that, mm -hmm. that U-turn. Look, look in uh, Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, because uh, we've got good news. And, and here, a follower of Jesus, Paul, gives us a word in Romans 2, and then Jesus himself will read in John 16. Daisy, do you have Romans 2 and verse 4? Sure. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? That's a great translation. What, what translation is that? New Living Translation. To turn you from your sins. What does anyone else, what does your Bible say? God leads. The goodness of God leads. Leads. To lead you to repentance. Yeah, so that's, it's the turn, as Ulrich pointed out. It's a, you, you were heading in one direction. Mm. So it's, it's not just I'm walking in darkness, I say forgive me and keep walking in darkness. Mm. No, to repent means to? Turn. It means to, to, to make a turn. One other text in John 16. Uh, Jesus obviously believed in the importance of repentance because that was his message. Repent. The kingdom is at hand. We're in Luke chapter 16. John, John. Oh, excuse me, John chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. And I have a volunteer who would read that for us, Ulrich. Verses 7 and 8. This whole uh, chapter is about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but 7 and 8 is about repentance. Reading from the uh, New King James Version. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So again, if, uh, Bliss says, if you don't feel your need, ask God to show you your need. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel strong enough to make the U-turn, ask the Spirit of God, because he's the one that actually will affect that turn in you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you think of a story in the Bible? And there are many, so you're welcome to share one that impressed you. A, a remarkable story of a of repentance, of, of making a U-turn. Daisy, is there one that stands out in your mind? Yeah, that's just a couple, but I'll go with David. Um, David's story comes to me when he, first he didn't repent until the prophet came up to him and told him the story of the man, a little parable to get his mind thinking. What had David done at that point? He had committed adultery and murder. He had Terrible. taken one of his soldier's um, wife and got him killed. Yeah, so one of his faithful him. soldiers. I mean, it's just a terrible story. But yet when um, the, um, the prophet came and pointed out his sin to him, he realized that this was wrong. That's and his first step, right? Yes, mm -hmm. he, he realized that he had sinned. And then he? He repented. He turned away from that sin. Can we look at, look at that story? Sure. Mm -hmm. It's found in Psalm, well, the story is found in, in the books of Samuel, but the the confession is found in a scripture song in Psalm 51. It's one of my favorite uh, scripture songs. Mm -hmm. Psalm 51 verses 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. Elaine, would you read that for us? The first four verses and then I'll ask someone else to read verses 7 through 11. But we see this process that Ulrich talked about earlier about, I, I'm not going to keep going down that road. I'm going to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to turn Mm -hmm. from that way. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. How would you describe the condition of David's heart? Mm -hmm. Missy? I would say sincere and deep contrition for the pain he's caused not only to himself, but to those around him and to God. Ah, thank you for that last one. Yeah. Because true repentance isn't just saying, well, I'm sorry that I hurt you, but God, I'm sorry 
Mm. That'll hurt you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verses 7 through 11. Abigail, maybe you could read on for us okay. in Psalm 51, verses 7 through 11. And I'm reading from NIV. It says, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, and let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. And this is my favorite part. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Notice he recognizes that who has enabled him to make this turn? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. don't, I don't want to harden my heart to your spirit mm -hmm. because it's the spirit and God's goodness that leads us to? Repentance. to repentance. Nathan. I was just thinking about someone who says, well, I can't make that change. And yet it says, create in me. It mm -hmm. reminds me of creation. The spirit was actively involved in creation at sure. the beginning. Mm -hmm. The same word there, God's going to create something new in you. So I need a miracle, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can he do it? Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, if God can't perform a miracle of changing a heart, we should all just go home and cancel the rest yeah. of the program, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, but I want to give you an opportunity to share. Uh, we got several hands raised. But, but I also want to give you an opportunity to share a time when God led you to repentance because, because that is the miracle that we're talking about here. So several hands are raised. Ulrich. Um, I remember before I started uh, going to church, uh, I used to drink and go out to parties and... and By drink, and you're not talking alcohol. about water, right? <laughs> alcohol, but things that hurt you. Yeah, you know, things yeah. That, yeah. that hurt you. And I remember about a week or so before I got baptized, I felt no need to drink anymore. Mm. And um, I went to church, and the very first Sabbath I went to church, I got baptized, and ever since then, I've never touched uh, alcohol. So God helped me mm. to turn, make that U-turn from that uh, behavior that was destroying It's a me. radical change. Mm -hmm. Jesus talks about uh, turning and not looking back, right? Bless? I also think, um, uh, like my brother was saying, there is a con concept out there of this once saved, always saved. Mm. Sure. And my, my brother, older, you know, his relationship in this experience that he went through, you know, is a reflection of he entering into that saving relationship and being in a state and steadfast in that saving relationship. So let me ask you a question, because I think you're, you're on important. track. Yes. Would you say that we need to recognize our need every day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we yes. need to turn away yeah. from those things that mm -hmm. might lure us every day. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, That's right. Thank you. Puya. Um, just want to share my experience. Uh, I grew up in Adventist family, so, so I you're didn't... you're in a Christian family Christian in family. the country of... Burma. Of uh, Burma. Okay. Also known as Myanmar. Myanmar. Uh, I didn't have an experience like Brother Ulrich, but I... Uh, many times I ran away from God. Um, and the times that, you know, God leads me to repentance were like, when I don't feel like I was spiritually fit for His service, God will give me a chance to minister Him. Like, somebody will just call me and say, Puya, can you preach this coming Sabbath? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you lead out the Sabbath school discussion? You know, something like uh, for a chance for me to serve Him. Even though you were still kind of struggling. struggling. And, mm. and through, the, through the challenge, I will say yes. And in preparation for, you know, the service, God will kind of lead me back to repentance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like God, God could, that, that raises the question of, of whether we've got to be perfectly in order before we can serve God, mm. or whether he says, serve me now, yes. right? Yes. Follow me now. We'll come yes. to that step in, in just a minute. Daisy. Yeah, I remember an example, and like he was saying, it's a daily thing of repentance. And I remember one yeah. time clearly that I was talking to my mom, and I know a lot of people can relate to it. And of course, she said something, and I spoke back harshly and said something I shouldn't have said, which was disrespectful. And then I turned away and left. But I got that conviction that what I did was wrong, and I felt, I felt bad about it. But the Spirit spoke to me and said, you need to apologize for what you did it was wrong mm -hmm. so when I got that conviction I prayed and asked God to forgive me and then he gave me the courage to go back and tell my mom I'm sorry because it's really hard for you to acknowledge your sin and then go and apologize it takes a lot and I know God gave me the courage to go back to my mom and say I'm sorry I didn't mean to do what you said I mean I did so that's different from just saying oh well everybody does that you know I mean that you know 
everybody says things they don't want to say, but you're saying, no, that was wrong. I need to go back. We're going to move on. We've got 26 minutes here. We're, this study is important, isn't it? Amen. Uh, Amen. If someone says, well, first I need to recognize, recognize my need, and then I need to repent. repent. But if we stop there, we, we, we've got another vital step, and that is to believe in Jesus. And mm -hmm. we need to understand what that means. Mm -hmm. But let's look at a few texts together. John 3.16, perhaps one of the best-known texts in the Scripture. John 3, verse 16. I'm looking to see if someone has it. Lloyda, do you have that would read for us, please? Uh, yes, I do. And I'm reading the New King James Version, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whoever believes in him, that is in Jesus, mm -hmm. will not perish. Mm -hmm. Okay, recognize my need. Unless you repent, Jesus said you're all going to perish. perish. Jesus says if you believe in me. in me, you won't perish. So what does it mean to believe in Jesus? It's a mm. big question. Mm. What does it mean? To, does it just mean we know about him? Mm -hmm. What does it mean, Missy, to believe in Jesus? For me, it means to turn to him. Uh, when I'm repenting, I'm turning away from my sins and turning to Christ to follow Him. It is through Christ that I'm able to turn away from my sins and to follow a different path. Do I need to know who Jesus is in order yes. Yes. to believe in Him? Abigail? I was going to say that if I, just very simple, if I believe that it's going to rain outside, um, belief for me is an action word. So if I believe outside yeah. is raining, I'm going to prepare and have an umbrella when I walk out the door. Um, and in the same way, if you believe in Christ, then you're going to try to establish a relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. Let's know, take a look him. at that context if we can. Someone read for us verse 14 and 15 of John 3, because it, it is an action. You, mm -hmm. It's not just knowing about Jesus. And uh, Missy, I think you're onto something really important, that we look, we're looking to Him. Uh, Abigail, would you read for us verses 14 and 15? Okay. Um, and this is from the New International Version. John 3, 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, mm. that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. Does anybody know about the story? I, I looked it up in, in Numbers chapter 21. Yes. Uh, mm. What's happening there? It's the children mm. of Israel, mm. Ulrich. They were rebellious against God and disobedient. And Complaining as a result, again. Mm -hmm. He allowed serpents to, to, to attack them, bite them. Some of them died. But they prayed to him, and they, they repented, and God, in provision to uh, rectify the, 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 the problem, he commanded Moses to build a, a bronze serpent, and he commanded them to look upon the serpent. Hold it up on a, on a pole. On a pole, and all those who look upon the serpent, uh, they will be healed. So this was an act of faith. Of faith, looking to God's provision. Right. You know, it's interesting, in Deuteronomy, it says that they were in a wilderness full of fiery serpents. Yeah, right. So some people think, oh, you know, you don't listen to God. He's going to send a snake after you. <laughs> no. God had been protecting them all along. Yes. And they get all upset and say, God, we don't want to follow you anymore. And God says, do you know what's going to happen if I step back? You know, and that's the problem. But the provision, Jesus says, when they look to God's provision, mm -hmm. how? In faith. In faith, In faith. trusting they lived. Amen. What, so what does it mean to believe in Jesus then, Joel? Believing in Jesus. Not just knowing about him, right? Because mm. there are people that died in the wilderness who knew that a bronze serpent had been made and lifted up. Trusting in him and having faith in him, knowing that he will help you. Yes. So you recognize what, who he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is Jesus, uh -huh. the Savior. And you're asking him to do for you what you, you can do. What you cannot do. Yeah. 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 I think another word for believe will be accept. Mm. So now when we say we believe in Jesus, we accept him and we allowed him to work in us. And I think we can say that, you know, uh, believing in Jesus will be to have a personal relationship with him. A personal relationship with him as our friend. Friend? Savior. 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 Well, I mean, the, the, this is God's provision, right? Yeah. Yeah. So look in Luke chapter 7, 36 through 38. Uh, we're, gonna, we're trying, this is really important because, you know, somewhere doesn't it say that de devils believe 
And Trump, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they, they have not accepted him as Savior and Lord. Yeah. They know about him, yeah. but yes. knowing about is, is inadequate. Daisy, uh, Luke 7, 36 through 38. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. And now if you could read uh, verses 48 through 50 of the same chapter. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said amongst themselves, Who is this man that he goes around forgiven sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. What, what, what is she doing in, in anointing his feet? She's showing her appreciation and gratitude for uh, what he had done for her in forgiving her, uh, accepting her into uh, the, the home because we see here her faith is shown by her actions. So what is she recognizing in doing that? I mean, that he's her savior. That's right. She is, she's saying uh, she's actually right. anointing him mm -hmm. for his burial. Mm -hmm. People don't even understand that. But led by the Holy Spirit, she takes mm -hmm. this costly perfume. Mm -hmm. And she is saying in her simple act with her tears, I believe what? You're my You're savior. My savior. You are the savior of the world. Amen. You know, your faith has what? Renewed. Faith. What did it say? Yes. Your savior. faith has. Savior. Savior. Look at one more text in Matthew chapter 22, verses 2 through 14. Because Jesus tells a story here about a wedding. And, and apparently there's a difference between knowing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Joel, you talked about having a relationship. Yeah. Could you pick up the story for us in verse 2 sure. of Matthew 22, down through verse 14? And the relationship in this story is uh, illustrated by putting on a wedding garment. Mm -hmm. So it's an action word, right? Mm -hmm. by, by entering into a relationship. How does it read in your Bible? And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it reads, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son and sent forth the servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they went, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have made, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, mm. and went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servant, and answered them spitefully and slew them. And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Mm. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was finished with guests, furnished with guests. Mm. And when the king came into, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw that there a man had not on, had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said unto the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away. Cast him out, cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Mm. Now, so it's not enough to know there's going to be a wedding feast, <laughs> right? Yeah, they believe that there was. You got to go to the wedding feast, mm -hmm. Jonathan. I was just thinking, like, it's almost like kind of back to the identity idea we talked about last time. It's like he, the, the 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 master has been handing out these 
clothing in a sense of giving of himself his his identity his his riches his and he's giving it to this person and so they're 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 partaking in this 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 new identity in this relationship with him back to the relationship idea and, and this person apparently didn't put it on yeah mm -hmm. right didn't accept the provision that had been made and comes without the wedding garment on it's interesting that the 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 uh, the master says friend yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, many of, how many of God's children does he love? Oh. But we have to accept mm -hmm. God's provision That's mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. through Jesus. Now, is there in some other text we think of this garment or this uh, raiment that we're supposed to put on? Is it, can you think of any other Bible reference to that? Anyone? Righteousness uh, right. of Christ? Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, the story, there's a prophecy in Zechariah about We're putting on the clean on garments, the okay? Mm -hmm. And isn't there something in Revelation about yes. Yes. you're naked and I'll give you a white yeah. raiment? Yeah. Yeah. The church. The... It's coming from God. Mm -hmm. yes. It's His provision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what is it? What is this garment that He's giving us? It's Anybody his, know? His Daisy? robe of righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Bliss? His robe of righteousness. Yeah, it is His righteousness. We, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory, glory of God. Of God. Mm. He wants to forgive our sins, yeah. but He also wants to clothe us. That's right. Right? Yeah. With, with His righteousness. We need to accept mm -hmm. that provision that He's made for us. A mm -hmm. mm. couple of hands raised. Yes, Missy. I'm just thinking that we have to yield to Christ. Uh, Obviously, we have to put on that robe of righteousness, which represents Christ's, uh, his provision, his perfect life, is what is seen when we put on yeah. that robe of righteousness. Mm -hmm. We also have to yield our will to God, because yeah. it's unless we are completely moldable, completely uh, directable, that he can work in our lives. Sure, and back to what Bliss said earlier, that, that's a decision we need to make how often? Yeah. Daily. Every day. Every day. You know, when, when, when they were reading that story, I don't know if any of you related to this, I know I did. When, when, when you, you read about going out into the highways and byways, who read that text about going out looking? Um, and I'm thinking, was it Joel? And I'm thinking, I'm so glad they did that because they found me. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Yes, indeed. Amen. We may, we may not have been the ones that they first expected would be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they went out into the highways and byways and, and they found us mm -hmm. and invited us to come. But still, we have to choose to accept that, right? Yes. Right. yes. Got, w w there's something we need to do. Bless? And I think it's uh, very important for us to also understand uh, a little uh, process of this, this process, yeah. which is when we when we come to Christ, He justifies us, uh -huh. you know, but we have to accept that. We have to actually believe that, yes, He is forgiving our sins and He covers our sins. But let's not forget He's in the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. and You're going to take us to step four. <laughs> but Because but what do we have to do once sure. we've accepted that robe of righteousness? That's right. Um, What's the next step? The, follow. Follow Jesus. We have to follow, forsake yeah. and follow so that He can blot out. Sure, and there's the, the sanctification That's process, right. exactly. which is the work of how long? A lifetime. Of a lifetime. A lifetime. So I'm going to review the steps, but I want someone to share a testimony. So let's just review the steps. Step one is to recognize, recognize our need, right? Mm -hmm. Step two is to repent. repent, which means to do what? Turn away, turn away. Turn away from that path of sin and to turn toward Jesus. Okay. Step three is to believe, believe in Jesus, which means to accept Him, accept and enter into a relationship, relationship with Him as Savior. Mm -hmm. But step four is a daily journey right. of following oh. Jesus. Now, before we go to step four, I want to give someone an opportunity. I, I wanted to share mine, but I'm not going to. But I'm glad he went out into the highways and byways. Amen. Is there someone here who remembers when, to use the illustration, a messenger of the Lord came to the highways and byways and found you and called you to Jesus? Anybody that would like to share a story about that? Anyone? Nathan. Well, I was searching for peace in my life, and I was looking into all the wrong places, Hinduism, Buddhism, New Age cult, and um, I had a friend who kept sharing with me. Every time she'd cut my hair, she'd tell me how much Jesus loves me, and at first, I just kind of dismissed her as a Jesus freak, because I thought I grew up in a nominal Christian home, and eh, Christianity didn't do anything for me, but she really seemed to think that Jesus was a real friend. And that he really, you know, like she talked about him like she knew him. And she kept saying, God loves you so much. 
and Jesus came for you, and he died on the cross for you. And eventually that sunk in, and I realized God does love me. God came for me. I can put my name in those, those promises. And I felt, I mean, for me, in my mind, to see Christ on the cross and what he did for me, it caused me to fall on my knees in tears and cry and say, Lord, I, I, I surrender. You know, I'm tired of running. I looked in all these other places and I found peace finally. I'm so glad you got your hair cut. Because <laughs> it was while you getting your hair cut that she was talking to you. Haircut Bible study. Haircut. That's awesome. That's awesome. We'll encourage our friends to go get their hair cut at a Christian uh, barbershop. barbershop or hair salon. Step four, it is a journey. Yeah. And some people say, oh, yeah, I... I I, uh, I, I was saved 10 years ago like it was just something I did and I'm, like I bought a car three years ago or I was saved 10 years ago like it's just something back there. Mm. But it's a daily experience. Mm. Let's look at a few Bible texts that talk about the fact that we not only need to recognize our need, repent, believe in Jesus as our personal Savior and Lord, but to follow Jesus. Mm. Mark 1 and verse 17. Mark 1, Wilbur, could you read that for us? Mark 1 and verse 17. And someone else look up Mark, Matthew 9 and verse 9 for us. Mark 1, 17. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version. All right, it says, Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. Now, uh, we're going to come to this question later, but... But are we saved when we follow Jesus, or do we follow him because we've accepted him? Mm. <laughs> or is it both? Yeah. Matthew 9 and verse 9. Let's look at another text. Mm. Do I have to wait till I'm saved before I follow him? Missy, Matthew 9, verse 9. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Would you say that Matthew was a saved individual just waiting for the invitation to follow Jesus? Daisy, what do you think? No. Um, it was an opportunity that Jesus gave him to come and learn and be saved. So, Jesus so called him. here's my question again. Is following Jesus the way to be saved or a response to his salvation? Yes. What do you think, Puya? <laughs> yes. You think it's both? Yes, I think it's both because like, like in the, the story of Matthew, Jesus said, follow me. In another text, Jesus said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, he has to pick up his own cross and follow me. So uh, I think the answer will be both. And I just want to add that, you know, um, some, some people might think that the steps that we're dis dis describing uh, might be some kind of systematic, you know, like you have to spend a certain amount of days in sure, this step. Sure. But I just want to mention that um, it, it, uh, we, are, we are supposed to let the Holy Spirit lead us. Sometimes, you know, the steps of repenting, recognizing our need may be just a few seconds, right. and the Holy Spirit will lead us to following Jesus. It could be that, that Matthew at the table goes, man, I... I'm, I'm really, I really need God, and, and I want to turn away from just living for money. And Jesus, Jesus. asked me, I think, and I'm going to follow him. It all could happen, you're saying, very quickly. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but each of those steps is important. Yes. Yeah. And then actually following him. John chapter 8, verses 28 to 32. This journey that we talk about, it's a day, daily commitment. And... Abigail, would you read for us Luke, in John 8, beginning with verse 28 down through verse 32? Okay, I'll be reading from the New International Version. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases Him. Even as He spoke, many believed in Him. To the, Jews who had believed in, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, from Abigail's translation in verse 31, it said, If you hold to my teachings. Someone else have another translation? Abide in my word. If, you, my word. if you continue in my word, if you abide in my word. And to whom is he speaking here? Hmm. Believing Jews. To believers, right? Yes. Yeah. So remember, what was the first step again? 
recognize, recognize your need, need and repent, repent and believe. believe in Jesus as your personal Savior. Mm -hmm. And to those who believe, mm -hmm. he says you need to abide. continue abide. in my word or abide in my word. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What, what does it mean to abide in his word, do you think? Well, um, personally, I would say it's easy to get distracted, lose focus when you, know, you decide to follow God. So whilst you make that conscious effort to abide in the word daily, you know, learning of him, communicating with him, he keeps you grounded and focused in the direction he wants you to go. Is there a, a, a teaching of Jesus where he uses this term a lot, abide, abide, or, and yes. it can be translated John, remain, right? Yeah. Remain, abide, abide. John chapter 15. John 15, Ulrich, would you take us there? John 15, uh, let's read verses 1 through 8. Because uh, I think Will was absolutely right. Yes. There are distractions even for the believer. Is that right? Yes. Of course. Yes, Bliss. And uh, speaking of distraction, I think it's important to lay the foundation uh, before uh, Brother Ulrich reads that we, even those that are Jews or even those that were Christian, we actually really must believe that the Lord actually did forgive. Sure. Because sometimes, sometimes we uh, get into the form of um, confessing our sins. But deep inside our hearts, we actually don't believe. And it yeah. keeps on popping up in our sure. hearts. Yeah. So we, we keep praying yes. forgiveness for the same so thing. So we need to really come to the point where, you know what, Instead Lord, praising him. I trust you. <laughs> and what you say is true. Amen. When Amen. you forgive me, you forgive. It's done. It's it's done. done. That's it. Ulrich, take us to the first eight verses of John, John 15. 15. And, and hear this word, abide or remain, yeah. over and mm -hmm. over again. Uh, reading from the New King James Version. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Mm. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That's a powerful Amen. testimony. Amen. In fact, Amen. in a, a, an upcoming study in this series on the teachings of Jesus, we're going to talk about that growing relationship. Right. But did you hear that word abide, abide, abide? Yes. Why do you think Jesus says it so many times in that passage? This is very we, important. It's we important. tend to get discouraged sometimes. Yeah. We tend to get discouraged or mm. distracted. distracted, right? And he's saying, I want you to realize, recognize your need and repent and believe, believe in me as your right. Savior. And then follow, follow, follow me. And that, that's a daily journey. Yeah. Now, as we close our study today, I, I want to ask you a question. As you think about the scriptures, and it's good, Hope Sabbath School is based on scripture, right? We study the Bible. Amen. Is there a story that you see in the Bible that really is an amazing story to you of salvation? Mm -hmm. uh, one that jump, jumps out at you. We don't have time to tell the whole story. Which one really impresses you? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, <laughs> tax collector. The tax collector, yeah. Um, I just, whenever I read this story, you know, I, it just really um, personally uh, touch me because Zacchaeus was um, rejected by the community that he lived in and he, he didn't have any hope to belong but when he see Jesus he started feeling the need he started recognizing that he was a sinner and then the next come the next step comes in where he repent his all his wrongdoings he yep. repay all the you know the people that he got it from so and, and then he accepts Jesus he, he accepts Jesus personally and, and he, he follows, follows Jesus for the rest of and his life. And you know, at the end of that story, you know what Jesus says in Luke 19? Salvation, Salvation has come to, yes. to this house. Yes. Missy, is one that impresses you. I think the most radical transformation story, I think it's probably one of my favorite, is the Apostle Paul. Oh, yeah. Saul of Tarsus, yes. the persecutor. He, he was the most awful person. And then he 
turn, turn, flipped it, and one of the champions for God. Yeah. Mm. Unbelievable One who story. would force people yes. to blaspheme mm -hmm. and renounce Christ and now is willing to die. Yes. You, many, many would believe, would agree with you that that's a very compelling story. What, what's the most important lesson you've learned today from our study about how to be saved? What, Daisy, what really impacts your heart from I, our study today? I think the abide part is what gets me because sometimes we think I've been saved and that's it. But it's a daily thing. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we stay deep rooted in the Word of God mm -hmm. because we discover new things and mm -hmm. it, it enriches our lives and helps us to grow and become even better than we were the day before. Mm -hmm. And right. that abiding part really touches me that mm -hmm. we have to keep um, stay, stay, abide in the vine, right? And you yeah. keep helping us grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is a perfect introduction to the next part of our series on the teachings of Jesus because next time we're going to talk about growing in Christ and it is it's a wonderful journey don't think of it oh no I've got to keep growing praise God we keep growing right. it's an exciting journey as we have come into a saving relationship recognizing our need repenting believing in Jesus as our Savior and then following Jesus day by day I want to pray not only that you can experience that but that we can share this simple teaching of Jesus to bless the lives of those around us. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for the clear teaching of Jesus. To be saved is not complicated. You've given us clear teaching. Forgive us if we have made it complicated or tried to tell people they have to do a multitude of things. We thank you that we can recognize our need and mm. repent and accept Jesus as our Savior and then follow him day by day. Let the miracle happen. Mm. God, I pray that we would trust Jesus today ourselves and share that with those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. What a life-changing series of studies on the teachings of Jesus. I encourage you to live what you learn and then share that beautiful message with those around you.